ladies and gentlemen, that is our today's episode with the beautiful soul, Steve Jess. Uh, Steve and I, we go way back. Um, we worked together for over four years now. He's a wonderful human being and an even better entrepreneur. And I really want you to invite to learn from this guy because I've learned heaps of them. He's been my first mentor and uh, hopefully he can be your mentor as well uh, for today's episode of, of the records. Um, Steve, what was your first contact with music? When did you experience music the first time consciously? So the first experience was uh, when I was about 11 years of age, my uncle John, um, he was that kind of young, younger uncle that was the rock star in the family, you know, was the songwriter, guitarist, um, you know, was in a band and it was just a cool uncle that could really relate to all of us kids, my brothers and my, my sibling, my, my cousin Sash, who was into uh, drumming and, and um, yeah, I remember he just sat us down um, every time we'd come around to his place in his studio at the back behind the garage there. You know, had these beautiful Zerva Vegas speakers um, and he just sat us down and said, guys, just listen to this and listen to the things like, you know, Pink Floyd, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, Black Sabbath and life just changed from that point on. Wow. That's really powerful. It's funny that you remember the brand of the, of the speakers. <laughs> Must have had a long, long experience. So Steve, you're, you're, you're a musical entrepreneur now for quite some time. Can you tell us a bit, little bit how you got into becoming um, a musician and, and how did you transition into becoming an, an entrepreneur yourself? Sure. Um, look, from that point on, you know, a lot of discussions with my uncle John and he was and uh, in a lot of ways still he's a mentor to me although we don't um have that much communication but um you know he, he just had a real ability to to empower um you know us and so since then you know through those deep discussions you know based on philosophy and music um from the age of 11 um and you know being around that environment so namely was my uncle uh, my brother chris and older brother chris was you know, phenomenal vocalist and my cousin Sash who's a phenomenal drummer so you know having that environment being around that almost every day we catch up with him um, from that point on you know I committed my life to music whatever that looked like I wasn't sure but I knew that music I served you know at the highest level and I just wanted everyone to experience it and I obviously wanted to be a musician in the journey but having you know um, Uncle John always kind of ask me and present say hey you know what instrument do you want to do what do you um, is it guitar and is it, you know, singing? Is it, you know, the harmonica? I sort of went through these different instruments, finally landed on the piano. And then since then, um, you know, followed people like John Lord and from Deep Purple. And he introduced me to some of the greats in the, in the classical era as well. So from that point on, I just knew that I just wanted to dedicate my life to becoming a musician. And so I just went on a path to pursue being a musician. And, and you know, I fell in love with the piano from a very young age. I did all my training. Um, but, um, yeah, in my, after doing university and, you know, studying at the conservatorium, doing bands and cover shows, I, I was mainly, you know, my experience stems a lot from cover bands and tribute shows and we've toured across the country being in Australia, you know, it's a very popular thing and sort of got to a point where at 26 years of age, having juggling the musician lifestyle with, you know, working and also full-time role. In, in other jobs, you know, I worked at Telstra for a number of years. Um, yeah, I just discovered some pretty profound, cool things um, and mentors that opened me up to think more like an entrepreneur and not like a musician. So, yeah, I, I experienced some pretty profound tools and principles and, and approaches, you know, regarding mindset and universal principles and things that just really resonated with me for the first time. And just since then, Michelle, I've just um, wanting to share that and infuse that with everything that I do as an artist and as a musician. And I see myself as an artist in an entrepreneurial sense, more so than just a musician now because of that way of thinking. Mm. So since then, you know, I had great ideas. I saw a problem in the industry and I was able to go, okay, cool. I can solve this problem and I'm inspired to solve it because I love music so much and I want everyone to, you know, make a living uh, as a musician and go all the way. So that's, that's what inspired it. Yeah. 
That's amazing. You used a couple of words uh, that 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 I would love to elaborate on. What um, what is an entrepreneur for you? What does that mean to be an entrepreneur? Good question. Um, well, technically, uh, if you look at Wikipedia, it's a you know a promoter in the entertainment industry or someone that takes on um, a, a risk in the hope of a profit. Um, but if you look back to the origins, entrepreneur actually comes from the word entrepreneur in, 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 in France, which denotes the director of a musical institution. Um, so I think since I discovered that, I, I started consciously using this word a lot more, entrepreneur. And for me, an entrepreneur is someone that takes risks. Uh, an entrepreneur is, is, almost, is pretty much an alchemist, someone that sees a gap in the market um, that hasn't been solved, um, that takes the risk that's required and financial investment to, to bridge that gap and to make that change and to, to create something beautiful and that hasn't been created before. That's, that, that's what an entrepreneur means to me. So I see that way as being an artist as well, you know, creating something from nothing almost. Interesting. So, and how does it relate to, um, let's say, if I'm a musician and I want to I wanna go uh, pro as a, as a musical, which means I want to start making money or making a full-time income, how does being an entrepreneur relate to being a musician? Is that, is that a correlation or is that? Yeah, well, I think it just has to be very clearly articulated, you know, when mentors and producers and professionals working with people that is like emerging artists, they have to understand that there's a crossover from the art to actually in the skill of developing yourself as an artist to the skill of developing the business, marketing, sales, business strategy, they're different skills, they're different instruments, you can kind of call them, and giving your clients or your, your followers and or whoever it is that you're you know, looking to help, the conscious choice to say, hey, do you want to invest in a new skill now? Because you're going to have to start to you know, focus less on spending the hours of practice of the day or in the studio making music or maybe just you know, organize your time and say, okay, cool, I've spent four hours on my music now, I need to spend four hours on marketing and sales. And so if they can, you know, giving them that choice and then should they make that choice, then great. You know, they are on their way to developing new skills as an entrepreneur and being able to use those skills to actually, you know, monetize, productize their services and their skills and their music. So, so did I hear that correctly that as a musician, in order to go pro, you need to learn more skills than just the ones on your instrument or just the ones on, on, on your laptop or on your, in your studio, but also learning other business related things. And so that combination then becomes, you become an, an entrepreneur in a musical sense then, is that, is that correct? Well, if you want to, yeah, if you want to be an independent artist, that's what it means. You've got to independently market yourself. You've got to get good at marketing. Um, but if you want, if you're like, no, I want to focus on the music full time and let someone else take care of that well you're going to be prepared to pay management fees and let them take care of that which is great as well it's a beautiful partnership um but just make that conscious choice okay about how you want to spend your time so what in your opinion then are the additional requirements the additional uh skills that you need mm -hmm. to that you need to work on in order to transition from being a musician meaning like i spend six to eight hours working on you know on playing a guitar or or working on my desks or uh, then transitioning to to become a full-time artist what what are those skills required in your opinion look it's yeah it's sales marketing um sales and marketing and these days i think musicians more than ever are seeing the rise of independent artists because of the social media driven world we live in and they're seeing sponsored ads that are specifically targeted to them that are tapping into their dominant buying motives and realizing why wow, i can be on the reverse end of that doing this with other artists um so th that's a that's a whole skill in itself you know but it's a skill and it can be learned um so marketing and sales primarily the two skills um that need practice practice basically in the sense the same amount of practice that you spent you know mastering your craft whether it's five ten thousand hours realistically you know if you want to lead in your niche you've got to be the one with a lot of those hours um that you've spent practicing in that skill hmm. and like from 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 your direction that's that's i i believe where you found usm as well universal school of music um which is now in its 10th year i believe um yeah. Why did you initially 
found found the, the company and and what what is it now like and what is it you know what is it focusing mm. now on can you give us a little overview of it yeah sure um okay so at 26 when i when i discovered this world of you know personal development and um things like you know metaphysics um things that were never really taught in school the concept of being versus doing you know we're human beings not human doings um, universal laws like the law of the one and the many, you know, a classic book that illustrates that is the one thing. Um, it really opened my mind up to a possibility, a new possibility and how I w would be able to um, pursue a, a mission and, you know, things like one of the trainings, I remember we did the third trainings in the series with this company called MJB Seminars, right? that um, we did an STP student teacher profit. It was a five day program. You know, it's the first time I've ever invested my own money into my personal development. I'm spending thousands now and I'm, you know, it was, that was a big jump in itself, but I'm seeing returns and I'm seeing my life and my mindset shift. So I continue to see the return on that and I'm investing. And then he said, look, now we're going to all write our missions, mission statement. I'm like, what the hell's a mission statement? Essentially uh, just a blueprint to, to the life you want to create. And, you know, like an architectural drawing in a home, right? That's how you manifest the physical creation. You need to draw or put it on paper and life's no different. Mm. You need to customize that. You need to kind of put that into a roadmap and a series of short long-term goals and have a vision and then pursue that vision and vision and have strategies to get there, right? And I was like, this kind of, this really makes sense. I'm just going to give it a go. But since someone held me accountable, you know, I invested into that and right? I knew this was the way to go. And I, but as soon as that happened, and as soon as I put it on paper and I, and I started reading and, and really like reading this mission journal every night and updating it and crafting it, refining it, I, I believe I had laid down the foundations to, to, to my purpose um, because essentially that was, the, that was what we were doing. And I really dug deep and we, there was a lot of preparation that, you know, we reflected on spirituality, finance, career, relationships, all these different areas. And, you know, we were kind of held accountable to put it on paper. So that first step in that law of manifestation actually was activated. And since then, you know, I've known there's people that have done the similar program that haven't continued on because they haven't practiced that skill. But I, you know, and, and many others have and continue to work with that and share that with others. And so since then, seeing those, that, that, that approach to really help people live a life uh, in in alignment with the highest values and their purpose and to be able to like put that into some kind of roadmap with you know actual milestones and timelines and deadlines it started a whole new process and since then because that was the point where i was inspired by all these you know cool things universal principles universal laws and metaphysics but i was also inspired with music and i was kind of almost at a crossroads because i was also also made redundant at telstra around the, that same time and I was like, what am I going to do? Do I pursue, you know, to get another full-time job and just do music part-time or outside hours? What do I do? What do I do? And it just, it came to me. I was like, why don't I combine, you know, these universal laws and kind of just uh, classify a lot of that under universal laws and music and put this, create a place where I teach these principles and, you know, work with musicians and call it Universal School of Music. And that's how Universal Music started. But since then, Michelle, like it's, it's, yeah, it, there's so many branches now because of the fact that I have this amazing, incredible team, including self on board that, you know, I, there's no way I'll be able to, you know, record and produce release artists at your level. And, and that's the thing. I also realized the power of building a team and how, you know, when, when, you, when you have a very clear vision um, and it's inspired, it's pulling you, others, you, when you give others the opportunity to jump on board, they come on it, that, on that, that journey with you but they also then add so much more to that so that's where we're at now you know where we've developed our model into three phases we're taking musicians all the way into a full-time career um and we can only go further with the team and a growing team cool awesome man thanks for that insight that was that was okay. that was really cool um let's jump back for a little mm -hmm. you studied music as well right i think you know most mm -hmm. people watching that they either thinking about studying music or they have studied music. And I, I would love to hear your, your story. You once shared that story with me um, um, about when you went to your professor, I, I believe, and you had this really 
a profound uh, conversation um, when, 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 when you ask him about like, hey, where's it all going? Uh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you can you maybe yes. share that with the audience because I I, th I, I always love that love that story. <laughs> um, I think it was in my second year at uni. Um, what did you study at that time? Um, I studied bachelor of music. Yeah, and what what instruments? A piano. Piano. Cool. Um, yeah, look, I, I worked with some amazing professors. Um, you know, my my piano teacher at the time taught David Halfgott from Shine, um, the movie, and, you know, he was a Chopin specialist and beautiful, beautiful, most amazing, like, mad magician, I call him, right? Um, and so that was all good on my own. I'm really focused on craft, but th there was also an expectation walking into university that that would be my gateway to network and to start to make some income, right? Because I, I knew that, you know, I was, I was investing all this time and money into, um, a, you know, a degree. I came from Queensland. I, you know, shared accommodation. I worked at market research, did it tough, right. To kind of live this independent lifestyle and, and just wanted to make myself and my family and, you know, show my community that I could make it as a full-time musician. So I started asking those questions really early on. And I remember, um, you know, having this conversation with the director of the conservatorium and he invited me into his office, you know, beautiful mahogany, um, desk and you know, this beautiful, nice um, uh, lead light windows behind. And I was, you know, just felt like graced as, as I sort of had this conversation and he sat me down and I sort of just, I, you know, I just, I had to blurt it out. I, I had to just speak the truth. And I said, Hey, um, professor, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying it, but where are the gigs? <laughs> 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 yeah. where are the gigs <laughs> and he looked at me like a bit of a stunned mullet I don't know if you heard that expression like a, a fish this is like stunned right <laughs> and I think it, he just looked back and he kind of knew that I'd figured out the system that I was brought into and kind of almost sold into was not there to help me build a business and make me a full-time income it was just there to help continue to, to develop my skills as a musician and hopefully with those skills that some hope strategy at the end of it would enable me to translate it into a full-time career doing what I love. But he knew that I knew that wasn't the truth. Um, but you know, don't get me wrong. I really, really appreciated that whole experience because it wouldn't have got me to where I am now. So. Hmm. Well, let's, let's stick with that system a little bit. Uh, let's say there's a young musician um, or maybe yourself um, coming to you now, um, you know, finished, finished high school, made music for a while and really loves music and comes with you with the question, Hey Steve, what am I, what would you, you know, what would you advise me to do? Because I'm thinking about going to uni. Um, you know, I'm mm -hmm. thinking about, you know, playing in bands and I really want to go pro. What would your advice, advice be to your younger self? Um, I'll start with the top layer, the, the one kind of crafted response, and then I might work backwards. Mm -hmm. um, pursuing, you know, a music career um, in a very humble but realistic way. I want to say this is to basically put your money where your mouth is. Right? What I mean by that is invest in your own growth and seek mentors who have been there and done it. That's pretty much the, the solid statement I want to make about that. Um, yeah. So, you know, so invest in your own growth and seek mentors that have been there and done it. And by investing in your, your own growth, it's not investing in a pre-designed system that everyone else is doing. It's actually actively seeking specialists that can help you clarify and crystallize your path, not mm -hmm. a pre-existing you know, curriculum. It's your path. And just, yeah, uh, based on my own personal experience, you know, and all the, I've spent well over $100,000 of my own in money, not including university fees, with mentors. And I've just seen the result. I've seen how by doing that each time, I'm getting further ahead of the game. It's because of that, I'm, that I am where I am today. Let's, uh, let's maybe work on an example. So let's say um, John... Uh, John is 18 years old, uh, 18 mm -hmm. years old, and he plays a piano. Um, mm -hmm. 
mainly pop and he wants to work on um you know developing his career his his plan is to to be a full-time musician earning between 60 to 80k a year what mm. specifically would you would you tell him to do you said about mentors but what specifically would you give him what advice would you give him um you're going to have to invest in mentors, producers, your equipment and a lot of stuff. So you definitely need an income. So find, find a part-time job or even a full-time job. If you're single, because you don't have other commitments like children and other things. So you've got 24 hours in the day and it's been done many times over. You can work a full-time job for eight hours a day and then spend the other eight hours on developing your business and your music career. Um, but you know, have, have at least an income coming through. So have a job that can support you financially and then come up with a game plan um, using, you know, spreadsheets and a financial forecast of what you need to do to gradually phase your, you know, and reduce your hours in that part-time or full-time role and start to cross over to becoming a full-time musician uh, by, you know, monetizing all your skills and your services and whatever products you have as a musician. That's pretty much mm -hmm. the magic formula that we, we use, that I use with clients, that I would recommend any musician does, especially you know, when they're making those decisions about what's the next step after finishing the school. Mm. Um, and then once you've got that, go and seek specialists. You know, if there's a university that can help you go from A to B, awesome, do it. But you know, it's essentially a business plan. And if they can match that and, and guarantee that they can take you from A to B, then you, you're moving forward in your direction. You're not moving forward in a direction that's the direction to nowhere. Yeah. So it's reverse engineering all of that. Vague, having a vague framework you know, and this in itself, you need to clarify this with a mentor or someone who's been there to help you get clear on that path. Then once you've got that roadmap, you pursue your path, you drive it, but you engage in people, resources and team members to help you move forward on that roadmap. And okay. it's your path. Yeah. It, it sounds it sounds to me a little bit contradictory to what like what most people get um, get the advice from right because like mm. usually the pathway is you finish with school you go to university and then you basically work from there but what you're saying is the first step is uh, to get a job <laughs> to get a real job um, and and basically work slowly and and systematically but for me like that's not how like I grew up and that's probably not the advice that many people give. So where, why do you draw the conclusion to get a job first and work with individual mentors versus going to university? What's the, what's the big advantage of that? Um, you're just going to achieve your goals quicker um, because what typically we find as musicians and just people in general, not just musicians, but we, we just tend to try to do it all. Um, you know, Jack of all trades, master of none. And the sooner you can make that decision to focus on that one thing, hence the law of the one and the many, the further ahead you get in that specialty, which means the quicker you, you get ahead in the market and you become a leader in that market. And once you become a leader in that market, everyone then follows you and wants your service and products because you're actually leading in the market. You spent the most time and energy and resources to get you ahead. And that's what everyone's trying to do. They're all trying to get ahead, but they're actually slowing themselves down by not, not stopping and going, what's the one path that I want to dominate mm -hmm. and become an expert on that's aligned with my values. So they go, well, let's just go window shopping for the next five, 10 years and see what the world throws at me. It's a decision. It, it needs to be consciously made. Um, yeah, like, you know, if people need to experience and travel, you can still do all that while you have a part-time job. And part-time job is, you know, what, 20 we'll say 20 hours a week, right? For the other, you know, if you're doing four hours a day, for the other eight to 12 hours a day, do your music, Yeah. you know? So both can happen, but you need, the, you need to invest in your music. And uh, if you th believe that you're going to, if, you know, if you just focus on the studio recording, writing, releasing all day and not having some game plan to share that, to monetize that, then you're just going to end up where I was Believing that, you know, the better the music is and the better that you are as a musician, the more success and attention you're going to receive. And it's, it's actually quite contrary. Mm. It has to come a point where you're like, cool, I've got, I've got a, four hours a day is enough time to continue to develop myself and master my craft and my music and record and release. But for the other four hours a day or 
eight, sorry, eight to 12 hours a day, what am I doing? And that's being able to manage your time wisely. That's why you need a coach to kind of keep you accountable, make sure you're not, you know, veering off and getting sidetracked by you know, all these shiny things. Um, because we all get uh, sidetracked. I still get sidetracked today. Interesting. So that's, that's pretty cool. So let me summarize. So um, when you're 18, you finish with school or even in your mid twenties or whatever, and mm -hmm. um, you want to go pro, well, traditionally there's, there's a pass of uh, going to uni and, um, or also the other side is like, no, 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 doing it all on your, on your, on your own, right? Going like uh, all in, you learn everything yourself, like you produce, you release everything on your own until you make it, right? Those are like traditionally what I find the two main mm -hmm. strategies, right, of, of things. Mm -hmm. But what you're proposing is the, is the third option, third option um, mm -hmm. um, of saying like, well, let's reverse engineer. So let's really think about what it is that you want to do in three to five years, see what, what you need for that, what income you need, to gain access to that look for mentors and then strategically working towards the career that you want not that university wants or uh, just just playing it by chance by doing everything on your own is that is that is that correct yeah. and exactly the first okay. step in that process is identifying where you want to be be able to measure that because you know gosh, you know you my i'm musicians mentors we've worked with so many musicians and they just have a very vague concept it's a number one core problem is lack of clarity and like what that looks like what does that mountain peak look like in five years is it okay professional singer songwriter what does that mean how many followers how much income are you earning what kind of products do you have you know are you signed if not and if you're signed what does that deal look like you know because if you don't know what you're looking for then how you know you're going to achieve it it's it's very vague it's a fantasy as opposed to a dream with with actual goals mm. measurable goals Okay, cool. No, I like that. I, I really like that approach. And I, and I hope that, you know, the people watching are really kind of taking that on board as a third option because it is, it is fairly new, that idea that we're not following the educational system or completely breaking out of the educational system and think like, you know, stuff it all. I do it my way or the highway, right? Um, so I, I really like that. So let's say, um, you know, I acknowledge your past and I really want to go ahead with that. Where do I found mentors like how do i approach them what do what do i do let's say there's a again john 18 he's a pianist mm -hmm. and there's a, a really cool piano player that he would like to learn from right like what do you do now like are you just giving them a call or how, how does it how does it work what's the next step to obtaining a mentor yeah i, I wouldn't recommend just working with one mentors you definitely work with a number of mentors at different points in your journey mm -hmm. um because they all have specific skill sets and they can definitely take you from A to B or B to C. But that's the thing. Like you don't want your, that mentor to determine what B to C or C to D looks like. That's, that's up to you. Mm -hmm. um, with, with the help of mentors, you don't need to make executive calls. You, you engage in your resources. So, um, sorry, if you can just quickly rephrase the question, mate. I'm lost track. Yeah, sure. So, so how, how, do, how do we go about finding a mentor? Because there's, uh, let's, last time I checked, there was not a website, uh, findyourmentorhere.com. What do you do? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, well, you reach out to people like yourself, m me, uh, you know, this is what we've created, a whole tribe of mentors at USM. We've got a mentor training program. Um, but, you know, if you don't have access to that, um, like seek, people that have been there and done it. And, you know, I recommend you have direct relationships with those, with those mentors, um, but actively seek, seek them out. Um, you know, it, it, you can't sit there waiting for this, for them to come to you. You have to do your research and, and actually identify like who is walking in the path that you want to walk in mm -hmm. to some degree. And reach out to them. Like it's not hard oh. these days to reach out on oh, social oh, media. How do you do that? Like, like what, what does the yeah. email look like? Saying, okay. dear, blah, blah, blah. What do you write that kind of Im 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 increases your chances of actually being heard? Because the people that we admire are usually busy, right? Like, how do we, how, yeah. how do we increase the chances to get through? I can guarantee you that, you know, one, at least one in three people that you approach in the industry will be happy to connect with you and help you. So all it is, whether it's on Messenger, people can be found on Messenger on their Facebook page, on their Instagram. Um, if you can get their email address, that's also great. But don't just rely on one platform. Like attack all of them, and reach out to them. It's like just be open and honest and say, look, I want to learn and gain as much experience 
and in wisdom from you as possible. I'm willing to work. I'm willing to donate my time to help you and understand your, your time is precious. Um, how can I help you so that you can help, help me? And, and I want to just draw wisdom from you. And I, I'm looking for a mentor. Um, this is me. This is my link. Um, hope to hear from you soon. That's it. Okay. So, so ideally you want to provide some value um, to your mentor as well. It's not just, Hey, do you, you know, can I pay you for your time or something? Absolutely. Like, and if you can be willing to invest, if you want to work with a professional mentor, um, they're professional because a professional gets paid. If you want mm -hmm. to work with an amateur mentor, um, an amateur mentor is an amateur, someone who doesn't get paid. Mm -hmm. So yeah, your choice, uh, be prepared to invest. And you know, if you've got a budget, just be like, look, this is my budget. What, what does that include? Uh, this, this is my budget. This is what I can work with $50 a week or a hundred dollars a week gotcha. or whatever. Or I'm willing to donate my time. I'm good with spreadsheets and making phone calls. And if you want me to do so, you know, anything that's of value to you, let me know because I'm, I want to make this work. Let's work on this mm. together. And, um, I love, you know, be very grateful. Come, come with a very gracious and humble approach and just very, uh, yeah, open to, to, to their responses, whatever they need. Yeah. In exchange, because it's an exchange at the end of the day. It is, it is. And I find it like, I find it really helpful in the beginning when you approach a mentor. Um, so again, for, for people who are new to, to the topic of mentoring, mentoring is the combination of uh, teaching, coaching and counseling. Uh, so not just someone who teaches you how to play better piano in, in John's cage, but also, uh, case, but also um, to know how now to apply that knowledge and turn it into an income, right? Um, because otherwise, you know, you just have a teacher in, in that case. But what I find really helpful when people approach me or us um, or I, I reach out to people is in the beginning, when you look out for a mentor, most likely you don't have so much to give back right? Because mm -hmm. you're just in the beginning of your journey. So I find, what I find really helpful and uh, is to ask for a little bit of feedback regarding something, right? Mm -hmm. So just one piece of advice. Hey, I'm at this part of my journey. What would you think the next step could be? I know your time is really valuable, but if you can shoot me a one liner, I would really appreciate it. And um, if, if you get a response back, do exactly what they say that uh, you should do. And then get back to them and say like, hey, I've done that now. Mm. Um, what would be a next step? In, in that way, you communicate with your uh, prospective mentor that you're actually listening and you act on it. And, and, and yeah. people like mentors, people who are professionals, the, the, the best of the best, they love sharing their knowledge and they want to pass it on to the next generation because ideally we all want to be immortal. Um, so I, I think that's, that is a really good strategy to, to, um, to get some, some ground. Do you, do that is beautiful. I 100% agree. You know, when clients email me, um, you know, as, as like just helping out, I'm not directly working with them as clients sometimes and they'll say, okay, can you do this? Uh, and then come back to me when it's done. And then once I've done it a few times, that's to me someone I'm willing to invest more time into and take on board as a client um, because they've shown that they'll get the results and the more results they get, the better it essentially helps me. So it's a win-win for everyone. Yeah. And, you know, mentors, professional mentors want to work with, you know, quality clients and people who are willing to invest their time and resources. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I would definitely encourage you guys as well. Like don't hesitate to contact people that you want to learn from and that can bring you to the next level, but don't, but also don't contact people that you want to have as a mentor, maybe in 10 years from now. Right. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. who is the person that can help you to the next level? And I think a really good story is, um, I'm just reading the book, uh, The Power of Connection by um, Rick Rushton. Um, it's an Aussie. He actually lives here in, the, in Melbourne in the Dandedong Ranges. And he's a public mm -hmm. speaker for over 25 years, um, being taught under, um, you know, under Tony Robbins, uh, Bob Proctor and so on. And he shares the story how he met uh, Bob Proctor. And um, so he, he met Bob Proctor in, uh, at, a speaking, at a speaking gig and he approached him after the gig and just said, thank you. Mm. Right. And he speaks in this book a lot about saying please and thank you after mm. everything, thanking everyone for everything that they've done. And and um, he was the only one out of 2000 people who actually went to Bob and said, thank you. That was really, really valuable. Yeah. And what Bob then did, he said, like, hey, whenever you are in, in my town, I'll show you around. Right. Mm. 
So what happened two weeks later, he canceled, <laughs> uh, um, Rick uh, Russian, he canceled all of his appointments, flew over to a small town in California, right? Yeah. From Australia. And when he was oh. there, he gave him a call and said, I'm here. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so. How to be accountable, man. That's beautiful. Right? And, and, and Bob actually, you know, they, they spent some time with each other. They had some good uh, chats. And after three days, Bob was asking Rick, hey, do you, uh, how's your hotel? And he said, well, look, I'm not here, but hotel was probably a really dodgy one. And, and I said like, hey, why don't you sleep at a better place? And he actually invited him at his, at his, to his place, right? So Bob Proctor, you know, is a, oh. one of the most recognizable speakers and real estate uh, agents and so on. Um, and then became, he became his, his mentee, basically, of, of Bob Proctor, mm. right? Um, just for the power of saying thank you and following through. So, and I, I think that's, really, that's a really good lesson for, for musicians who want to get into mentorship, who want to learn from different people. Be humble, learn, share, and apply what, what your mentor has to say, right? I really believe in the power of gratitude. I, I believe gratitude is the, is the key, the gateway to the soul. Like, and I couldn't agree more, man. Cool. Well, let's, let's, let's get a little bit back to, back, back to, you know, can you share us a little bit musically or personally, what was one of your highlights in your life and what was one of your biggest challenges that you had to work on? Yeah. Um, gosh, I mean, touring, you know, is, it was fun. Um, you know, I started, a co-founded a band called Controversy that was really exciting in my early 20s. Um, you know, while I was working at Telstra and living that dual lifestyle. Um, yeah, we, you know, we achieved success together. I think that whole experience of creating a team, um, something new that was, that was probably, in my view, one of the most successful highlights. Um, but on a more of a spiritual kind of level, um, you know, musically, as a performance, apart from playing some, you know, great corporate gigs and supporting some big names, I, I think there's something that touches the soul a bit further. And that is one time I uh, wrote a song called Peruvian Man. And it was actually about the shaman that I worked with in South America. Um, and, you know, I, I sang it during a ceremony and um, wow, like that was, it was a tribute to him. And it, it just, I connected with, with, my surroundings and you know the jungle and, and everything at such a profound level and it was visual so for me to kind of come out of that as an experience and to be able to connect with not just humans but like with 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 nature that was definitely a highlight for me wow that yeah. sounds i mean I, I think that experience alone is, is worth a whole uh podcast vlog episode <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to write a book. I'm, I'm, I've been writing a book about this bit by oh, bit, day by day, but hopefully I'll release it. Um, yeah, maybe at the end of ISO. <laughs> yeah. Well, let us know if it's finished and we'll bring you on and uh, uh, talk, talk more about yeah. it. And what would you say uh, awesome. one of your biggest challenges was that you learned from? Um, as a musician? As a person, as a musician, as whatever a comes to mind. Mm. Yeah, the biggest challenge. Um, there, there was a period where I, you know, about halfway into about three or four years into USM, um, where I decided to invest, you know, in a potential partnership and just, you know, learn to really value the lesson, an expensive lesson in that. and. I think that one there was the lesson I needed to understand in terms of the value of finding the right team and investing in the right team mate, um, members. So that year, it was, you know, the Chinese year of, um, in terms of the astrology, the year of the snake, right? And mm -hmm. I felt strangled that year. I really did feel like I was like strangled by this python, right? Um, and, but it was necessary. You know, I remember being in that scenario, we'd opened up another studio and we invested, you know, we built the studio and invested thousands, you know, close to a hundred thousand dollars of an investment there. Um, and just while that was happening, while I was in it, started to really see the noticeable problems and started documenting into training manuals and processes and procedures and like expectations. And then since then I, you know, knew the criteria that I'd be looking for in, in, in potential partners and people, you know, 
that I, I consider t- real team players. So as much as <laughs> it was a challenge for me, my you know, experience as an entrepreneur, um, it was also one of the biggest blessings. Yeah. Crazy. Wow. So you made a hundred, hundred grand mistake there. Yeah, potentially more in lost potential revenue, but um, also potential gain now that I see. So, you know, it's like one step forward, two steps back. You know, it was more like three steps back and but 10 steps forward, which I, I, I know for a fact that hadn't I've gone through that, broken through that challenge in my test, in my journey, then um, I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't have the wisdom that I have now to, to make the right decisions moving forward. And so, you know, right now we're looking at, um, we have existing partnerships. We're looking to really make that, you know, more accessible and available to other people um, as well. So I'm excited um, because of that lesson. But it was the necessary challenge. It was the, it was the death and rebirth on a much bigger scale from, for me. Interesting. Cool, man. Uh, let's, let's get a little bit into some quicker questions. Sure. My first question is, do you make your bed in the morning? Why or why not? <laughs> It's funny. It's, I, when I saw this question, I was like, good question. I make the bed in, in my family. <laughs> Why? Um, it's, Why it's, a habit, it's a habit that I just developed, you know, um, two, three main habits in domestic kind of chores. Ironing. I do my own ironing. I love ironing. I find it, find it ther- therapeutic. The vacuuming. <laughs> I, I do the vacuum. I love the straight lines in the carpet. <laughs> 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 and making the bed and I just what I do when I make the bed right I um when I, I fluff the sheet it's like I have this philosophy that only like I fluff it until it symmetrically just falls down and it's like it's perfect and at that point whether two goes or ten goes I know all the energy is cleared it's all even and it's like oh that's the one right and I lay this first sheet down and then I do the doona on top and do the same thing and it's just a habit I've developed since since childhood, you know, thanks to to good parenting. Interesting. What's your favorite record of all times, and why? Yeah, I thought long about this one, mate. Um, I, I have to say my favorite record is based on the one that I've thrashed the most, and I have to say that it's Deep Purple's album, the live album called Made in Japan. Mm-hmm. Why? Why that one? Um, look, that was at a time when I, my 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 older brother. Chris has been a very big inspiration in my life, especially in my younger years. Um, and, you know, that was a golden time for me. Um, and the inspiration that I kind of was fed through that album, that he was fed through that album, like, you know, Ian Gillen and John Lord, right? And I remember Chris being able to kind of hit those real high notes and he really pushed himself and he was able to, you know, hit those notes. You know, not many singers can hit that. And so because that was like the soundtrack to my whole life at that point and uh you know it was like this perpetual energy in motion that just continued to fuel up every time we listened to it it just became more better and reinforced inspiration and what was possible as a musician Mm. breaking breaking through for me breaking through boundaries that's a that's a real classic example of of breaking through boundaries and limitations Mm. as a musician that's that's like i see that as a progression that whole album of continually breaking through boundaries as a musician. Interesting. Cool. It's a great, it's a great, it's a great record. I, I, I didn't get that much into it. I think mm-hmm. I was more on the alternative rock side when I was younger, like Incubus, Audio Slave, Foo Fighters, um, Pearl Jam and so on. I, I, yeah. I discovered Pink Floyd a little bit later. Um, oh, okay. Wow. But great record, especially live, man. It's bananas. <laughs> Bananas. I thrashed it. And I mean, I, I listened to albums like um, Machine Head and all that. And that's, that's where I, it was two main influences for me. John Lord um, and Mozart and, and Beethoven, for example. So I kind of had this, you know, classic rock influence inspired journey. And I sort of married those two to get together as much as possible. Yeah. Cool. Next question. Um, you're the CEO, founder and director of Universal School of Music. What are the three things that you use daily for your work? Um, calendar, emails, and OneNote. Calendar, email, and OneNote. What is, what is OneNote for the people who haven't discovered that yet? Yeah, Microsoft OneNote, just a, a note-taking system. So it's where I basically capture all my ideas, take a lot of notes with my clients, with my team. You know, I have what, one, two, three, probably 30, 40 tabs there. 
Yeah. Um, and I, it's just, it's, it's a place I got to capture information, work and working documents. And um, yeah, also have my, my mission journal on there as well. My goals. Mm. Yeah. Cool. What are one, two or three ideas for musicians to make money that they haven't thought of yet? Strategic marketing. Okay. Real estate and equity and partnerships and, and agreements. And I ran a webinar last night on marketing and, um, in, you know, even the concept of what marketing is, it's, it, it's, it's new. And so understanding how marketing and strategy work together is really powerful. So if you, um, the, this is what generates interest. It's what generates fans. It's what generates followers, you know, people continually, um, you know, it's perception, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, an attention. So if you can um, understand strategic marketing, you can create value, which, which obviously is, you know, in a monetary sense, um, you know, an income. Cool. Uh, the What's other thing this? is real yeah. estate. Sorry, go on. Yeah. yeah. Real estate is the second one. That's very unusual for musicians. So I would love to yeah. hear about that. Yeah. I just think it's, it's a no brainer to be honest. Once you can, you know, find a steady income in invest in real estate, because there's been many times that I've been able to, you know, draw funds from, um, the equity in a home that I would never have been able to save. Um, and it's just, you know, it's an investment. Um, I just think that musicians are, you know, um, having establishing a, a financial stability, stable income is, 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 is a struggle for most, a lot of musicians, but if you can do that, you know, and, and have a part-time a job on the side of music and eventually make it full-time. Um, you know, I remember the first time I entered a mortgage, you know, I bought a house with my brother. That was a big jump because we were renting up until, until that stage. And, you know, for an extra hundred bucks, we could actually, you know, have our own house and that money would yield, you know, equity and, and, and income, you know, in the market. So 10% a year. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I was like, wow, I didn't realize until about five or six years into the, into having that property and realize you can just go to the bank and like, and they can ask you how much money do you want? I'm like, how much can I have? <laughs> 50, 80. Well, you can potentially pull out $80,000 right now. I'm like, what? That's, that's, that's unheard of. And I just think that if people need to understand how that works and it's not, it's not a far fetched reality. It's like, all you need to do is instead of paying rent is pay mortgage. And you know, you have to obviously invest in, you have to save up some money to, to pay a deposit but it's um yeah best thing and uh it can definitely help you as a career and the other thing is the partnerships um look into how you can set up partnerships as a musician and have some kind of structures work around that with commissions and referring clients and things like that it's, it's, a, it's a pretty beautiful thing so so do you mean let's say for example if i if i teach uh, a piano or a guitar um, what could a potential partnership look like with, with whom can I, could I undergo a certain partnership? What would that look yeah. like? Well, we have now, for example, you know, there's, um, um, you know, if you're, if you're a music teacher and you're focusing on, you're helping a musician develop their skill and their instrument, then, you know, what happens when they've done that and they need to, um, record and go to the next level and work with a professional mentor, you know, you know, you can't help them move further into their career if you're not a producer then what do you do well you engage in producers and you strike up a deal with them and say look i've got you know 30 students that in the next six months will be looking for a producer do you want to look at some kind of an arrangement whereby if i refer those clients on to you that i get some kind of portion in return in, in, um, in return for that oh, now, okay. if, if, if musicians on this call think that that's like something new please this has been happening for millennia but just be aware that this has been happening for a long time so just learn about how they work and you know the percentages and things like that and just speak to again a mentor that's been there and done it and they can give you a template yep. and you're like yep. this is how it works and this is how you invoice and this is how you get paid and it's a win-win-win you know to, to clear out any bias or negativity around like the money aspect and like you know mm, take 15 percent why would you do that it's 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 been done like get over your emotions and help each other like get over your own emotions around money <laughs> that's, that's another thing i didn't really mention but get over that speak with the pro work out how it's a win-win-win and then be like shit okay 
this is cool. I can actually work with an extended team and not just stay in my bubble. And in, in, the, main, in the process, like help my clients pursue their, their, their career dreams. And that's what developing a team is all about. You create partnerships with, with team, uh, teammates. Mm. Very good, man. I think that's, that is super, super valuable for a lot of people watching right now. Um, before we wrap up, I have one last question for you. Mm -hmm. Imagine you are on your dying bed, and, mm -hmm. um, but the day before you die, all information is being erased about you. Like there's no articles published about you. You haven't founded USM. Um, there's no recollection of you, mm -hmm. but you can make a, uh, you can write one sentence on a post-it note that you can, as your legacy now give to the new generation. What would be on that post-it note? Do what you love, I think. Do what you love. Um, that's, that's the most important message that I um, learned in this whole journey because it's a journey um, and if you're loving the journey you're going to get more success because people want to all um, ultimately just follow their highest values and the things that they want to do and love and pursue and we've seen that now like we've seen that people have been putting off their passions on hold and the only thing that's really stopping them from pursuing that is the income side of things. But if they can find a way to, you know, help others with that as a mentor or a coach or a, some kind of provider, then they've hit the jackpot. Um, so, um, yeah. That is beautiful, man. Uh, Steve, I want to acknowledge you for being an exceptionally giving person um, that always speaks with clarity and with honesty I want to acknowledge you that you always seek growth and that you also seek discomfort. I've never seen you stray away from a confrontation if, uh, if, it, if it nurtures growth. Uh, I want to acknowledge you for always taking care of the people around you, uh, for always being inspiring and um, yeah, being there for the people that, that matter in your life. Um, thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Steve, for taking the time today. Uh, thanks, guys, for, for watching, listening. Please uh, leave comments below. Please write us uh, emails. Um, you can reach Steve and uh, Steve's organization on a universalschoolofmusic.com.au. Um, I leave all the contact details there for you. If you want to, uh, if you're looking for a mentor, if you're looking for some guidance, if you're looking for further information, and you know now how to approach Steve if uh, you want to be mentored by him, I think we, uh, he and we gave you a lot of tips to do that. Uh, so use it, apply it, and um, we wish you all the best for your journey. If you ever need something, you know where I am, you know where Steve is. Uh, so far, that was off the records. And I'll see you on the next one. See you later. Bye. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. No worries. Bye.